Hello everybody and welcome to another Houdini tutorial. Today we will be discovering the, or going over really, the Pyro Solver in Houdini 19. We are going to be creating some pyro collisions as you see before you, uh, using some of the test geometry in Houdini. So let's get started and also try and get used to the new pyro interface. So as you can see here, I have two geometry notes. I have Craig, which is just a regular K Craig geometry. So you can get that with going to tab and test and picking Craig from the list. And then I've then added a null. So jumping out here, you can see I have a geometry node named clouds. And this is where we're gonna be creating our clouds. So diving inside, uh, let's start at the top here and create our clouds. Right here, I am using a sphere. I've translated it a little bit and played with the shape of it. So it's not just one big circular object. I've then copied it three times and translated those spheres like this in front of Craig. So he will be forced to walk through them like that. The next thing I've done is converted this to VBEs. So I've gone over here and dropped down a VDB from polygons and I've changed the voxel size to 0.02 and made the fog type as the density. Then I've added a volume bop because I wanted to add a little bit of noise inside my VBD. So diving inside, all I've really done is connected an anti-aliasing noise to the position of our VDB and let, added that to the density and then plugged that back into the density. The next thing I've done is added a cloud noise so I've added a lot of noise to this and just played with the amplitude and the octaves a bit. Then I've cached this out. I've only, I'm only caching out a single frame and I'm loading this from disk. Then I've time shifted this to make sure it's on frame one. So when we play this back in the timeline, we now have some static clouds. I've then added a null that says out emitter. Now jumping into the collision half of this experiment before we get to the pyro solver. So if we go to the object merge, we are bringing in Craig. So we're going to our test geometry and selecting our null, which is out collider. And that's bringing in Craig into our geometry object node. And then we've con converted Craig to polygons. And then turning on our visualizers, we can see the points, but no velocity. So now we've uh, created some velocity for Craig, so we can now see those trails with the point velocity SOP. You can see I've added some curl noise and basic here, I've gotten compute from deformation. I've then converted Craig to VBDs and we have him referencing uh, the billowy smoke collision SDF on our billowy smoke solver. And we'll cover more of this a little bit later but you can see I've changed the voxel size to 0.01. So jumping down to our pyro solver, I'm going to scroll to the top because this is going to get confusing very, very fast. So uh, one way to create a billowy smoke solver is you go type in billowy configure smoke, click that and it should appear in your scene. So as you see here, we've now found our solver. We're going to generally delete everything above the solver as well as the pyro look, so you only need the solver in this case. But uh, jumping into the solver over here, uh, the first thing you'll want to do is bring in the VVVs from your collision object and also make sure you can create this node over here. And you can create it by going to Quick Setups all over in this corner. If you go to Quick Setups, you'll want to set up SDF collision. And you can see it's now dropped down a poly VBD from polygons and linked it to my pyro solver, which is great. Now let's take a look at the solver itself. So you can see this looks very different from Houdini 18. Side effects is gone and confused us a little bit, but I can say with confidence that this solver is new and improved and way better than the old one. It just, it takes some time to getting used to. So let's cover the basic setups tab. You can see here, I have a voxel size of 0.03 to get those shapes visible in my clouds. And I can play with the time scale. Those parameters are now side by side each other. Down here, you have the option of switching between sparse and dense. 
So that's pretty great. And there's something new called Infection Reflection, and you can double project. I've got to look more into that. So we'll probably cover that in another t tutorial. Over here is your bounds, so your bounding box where you can play with that and base the resizing on different attributes. The next thing you can do is go to sourcing. Here is a really fun thing, and as you can see for these settings, we, we are using limit source range. And one way we are doing that is limiting our clouds to only generate between frames one and one. And we've said, give that a life cycle of 120 frames so we can see it last to the end of our timeline. Down here is your source volume, so we're sampling the density, the temperature, we're turning off, and we have our velocity, which are cranking up to eight. Collisions. We do have collisions, and they are SEF plus volume velocity, but you also have the option of just plain old collision geometry. And this is where you can also bring in velocity on your collision objects. In the Fields tab, you can also play with the density and dissipation, the temperature, the flame, and the speed and color, depending on what you'd like to do. Over here in Shape is where you can add further forces, such as buoyancy, wind, disturbance, turbulence and shredding, and flame expansion. For this simple project, we have this all turned off. The next thing you can go to is look, so you can add color to this if you want. You can crank up the density if that appeals to you, and all that fun jazz. And you can also add fire or flames. In the advanced tab, we have frames before solve. We can calculate that in. Reset rule. I need to look that one over. Uh, that one's really interesting, but you can basically reset certain fields. And the next one is export, so you can choose to export different attributes. So we're only exporting the density, the temperature, and the velocity, and we aren't really changing much down here. You also have the option now to convert it to VDB, so if you are, let's say, in a pipeline of a studio and you need to reconvert your VDBs to something else before you export them, or make sure they're VDBs, that's now a very useful tool to use. So, as and you can also pick your start frame up here, and reset your simulation. So that's how we are settings for our clouds. And the next thing we've done is cache it out to disk. And I have to say I'm quite liking these new file cache nodes because they do tell you when your cache is ready to go. And then we've added a null. And playing that back, you can see that's made an accurate smoke interaction simulation. So my name is Kate and I will see you in the next video. Bye.